næste Bøje Larsens blog. Jeg håber, du vil glæde dig over den video, jeg præsenterer i dag. This video is about one of my best books. I have had it on my bookshelf for 44 years. I have read it again and again. This book has given me a lot, both intellectually and as a basis for business and my Danish consultancy firm, Consulent from it Boe Larsen AES. This video is part three in a series about interesting books on my bookshelves. The video follows a video about two books about Arctic and Antarctic travels that ended in a catastrophe. That video had the title Death in the Arctic and Antarctic from my bookshelf, part one. A sequel had the title Death I and Dictatorships from my bookshelf, part two. The book in focus in the present video is Quality is Free by Philip B. Crosby, 1926-2001. The book was first published in 1979 and is considered a classic in the field of quality management and business improvement. It was a great success when it was published. On the front of the book is printed this from a review in the American magazine Business Week. How to manage quality so that it becomes a source of business profits. The executive who spends half a day digesting this book may find it one of the most valuable investments of time he or she has ever made. I find these words true also today. You can buy it at Amazon for $59. It is worth every one of these dollars. When I bought it in 1979, the price was $4.50. The logic of the title Quality is Free is that achieving high-quality products or services does not necessarily require significant additional costs. Crosby argues that the cost of poor quality, such as defects, rework, and customer complaints, is far more expensive than the cost of preventing defects in the first place. Just imagine the costs when a customer returns a product because it is defective. You, as a company, have to open the package, check what is wrong, repair it, and then perhaps send it back to the customer. All this is expensive handwork, and it is doubtful if the customer appreciates this. He or she would most likely have preferred that the product was perfect from the beginning. Crosby, therefore, emphasizes the importance of striving for zero defects as a goal. He believes that organizations should set the highest possible standard for quality and work relentlessly to achieve it. This requires a mindset shift from simply meeting minimum quality standards to aiming for perfection. Quality Improvement Process Crosby introduces a four-step quality improvement process called the Four Absolutes of Quality Management, which includes A. Definition of Quality Defining Chu a litty in specific and measurable terms so that everyone in the organization understands what is expected. B. Measurement of quality, implementing a system for measuring and tracking quality to identify defects and issues. C. Correction of quality, taking action to correct the root causes of quality problems when they are identified. D. Recognition of quality achievements, recognizing and rewarding individuals and teams for their contributions to improving quality. Management Commitment Crosby emphasizes the importance of strong leadership and management commitment to quality. He argues that senior management must be actively involved in promoting a culture of quality throughout the organization. Cost of Quality The book discusses the concept of the cost of quality, which includes both the cost of conformance, preventing defects, and the cost of nonconformance, dealing with defects. Crosby argues that reducing the cost of nonconformance is a key driver of profitability. Quality is everyone's responsibility. Crosby's philosophy is that quality is not just the responsibility of the quality control department, but rather the responsibility of every employee in the organization. He promotes the idea that everyone should be committed to preventing defects and continuously improving processes. While Philip B. Crosby's book Quality is Free has been influential and well-received by many in the field of quality management, it's not without its critics. Some of the criticisms and counter-arguments against Crosby's ideas and approach include overemphasis on zero defects. One common criticism of Crosby's approach is the relentless pursuit of zero defects. Critics argue that this goal may not be practical or cost-effective in all industries and situations. Some believe that the cost of achieving perfection and quality may outweigh the benefits. 
narrow focus on cost, Crosby's emphasis on the cost of quality can be seen as overly focused on financial metrics. Critics argue that quality should be viewed as a broader concept that includes customer satisfaction, innovation, and other factors that may not be easily quantifiable. Lack of flexibility. Some argue that Crosby's approach may be too rigid and prescriptive for certain organizations. Quality management needs to be tailored to the specific context and needs of each company, and a one-size-fits-all approach may not be effective. Evolution of quality management. Some critics argue that Crosby's ideas, while groundbreaking in their time, do not fully address the complexities and evolving nature of quality management in the 21st century. Concepts such as Total Quality Management, TQM, and Six Sigma have since emerged to provide more comprehensive quality frameworks. They claim to focus on the human factor and motivation, but are, in my opinion, fluffy and unclear, while Crosby's approach is based on hard facts and measurements. Seen from a larger historical perspective, the interest in quality management in the United States during the 1970s and beyond was greatly influenced by the success of Japanese companies in producing high-quality products at competitive prices. This period marked a significant shift in the way American businesses approached quality, and it was largely inspired by Japanese manufacturing practices. Here's a brief overview of the story of Japanese inspiration for quality management in the USA. After World War II, Japan was in a state of economic devastation. Japanese companies faced a lack of resources, limited technology, and a tarnished reputation for low-quality products. This difficult situation forced Japanese businesses to reevaluate their approaches to manufacturing and quality. W. Edwards Deming, one of the key figures in the Japanese quality revolution, was an American statistician and quality expert named W. Edwards Deming. In the early 1950s, Deming went to Japan to help with the 1951 Japanese census. During his visit, he introduced statistical methods and concepts of quality control to Japanese industry leaders. Deming's influence, Deming's teachings emphasized the importance of statistical process control, continuous improvement, and the involvement of all employees in quality improvement efforts. His famous 14 points for management became a cornerstone of Japanese quality practices. Quality circles. Japanese companies embraced the idea of quality circles, which were small groups of employees who met regularly to identify and solve quality-related problems. This concept encouraged employee involvement and empowerment in quality improvement efforts. Toyota Production System, TPS the Toyota Production System, also known as Lean Manufacturing, was developed by Toyota in the 1950s and 1960s. It emphasized the elimination of waste, efficient production, and a focus on quality. TPS became a model for manufacturing excellence and efficiency. The success of Japanese companies, Japanese companies such as Toyota, Honda, and Sony began to gain recognition for their high-quality products, efficiency, and innovation. Their success in markets worldwide, including the United States, challenged American companies to rethink their manufacturing and quality practices. In the 1970s and 1980s, American companies faced what was often referred to as a quality crisis. They were losing market share to Japanese competitors who offered better quality products at lower prices. This crisis forced American businesses to reevaluate their approaches to quality. Impact on American industry The adoption of Japanese inspired quality management practices had a profound impact on American industry. Companies like Ford, General Motors, and Xerox undertook major quality improvement initiatives to compete effectively. Thank you for watching this video about the trend-setting book Quality is Free by Philip B. Crosby. Please subscribe if you like my videos.